Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in our Discover Your Potential segment brought to you by Bodyline. Today, we're joined by a regular contributor, podcaster, and author, Dan Gilman. He's joined by our dear friend, Dr. Yasmin Saad. She's an award-winning, top-rated New York City psychologist and founder of Madison Park Psychological Services, and she's a two-time international best-selling author. Known as the wise psychologist, Dr. Saad is celebrated for her inner message approach. This transformative method helps individuals decode thoughts and emotions to overcome negative patterns and unlock their true potential. In addition to her clinical practice, she's an internationally acclaimed speaker, often sharing the stage with icons like Deepak Chopra, Dr. Shafali, Les Brown, and many others. Her insights have been featured in over 100 media outlets, including ABC, CBS, NBC, BBC, Fox, that's just to name a few. They joined me today to chat about the teen mental health crisis, strategies to overcome mental hurdles, and the importance of mental health resources and support. Welcoming now to the show are my dear friends, Dr. Yasmin Saad and Dan Gilman. Welcome, my friends. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. All right, let's jump right into it. You have a laundry list of accomplishments, my dear. So as an experienced psychologist, you recognized early in your career the need for a more expedient route to healing after noticing in many of your consultations some apprehensions about therapy, concerns about the time commitment, reluctance towards a, a passive therapeutic role, or even reluctance to, to delve extensively into past histories. And to my understanding, after reading up on this, this apprehension can be very dangerous as millions of people in the U.S. are affected by mental illness each year. And looking specifically at our youth, according to the CDC, over one in five youth at ages 13 to 18, either currently or at some point during their life, have had a serious debilitating mental illness. Dr. Saad, in your professional journey, what has been the most challenging aspect of addressing teen mental health and how have you navigated these challenges? That's such a great question, Zen. Thank you so much. So the most challenging piece with teen mental health is really the lack of education from the parents to the children. Teenagers and a lot of teens have a lot, a lot of negative thoughts and they do not know how to handle those negative thoughts. They either replace them with positive, are being told, think positive, think positive, or they're being told, don't pay attention to them, but those thoughts keep coming, keep coming. And I think the whole world is very ill-equipped to deal with negative thoughts. That is the main challenge, the lack of knowledge around what to do with those negative thoughts. Yeah. And to add to this mental health crisis, today's teens, to your point, could even be navigating, and this is additional stressors, a digital world that older generations never had. And while this technology and the online world continues to evolve, there are both benefits and repercussions, I say, as a mom. And I know Dan has a question pertaining to this. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts. So take it away, Dan. Yeah, I have a question with, with the rise of digital technology. What impact do you see it having on teen mental health? And what strategies do you suggest for managing this impact? So we all see in our children getting hooked and addicted to the screen. They're on social media and it's bombarding them. And now there's reels, they're fast reels. So they're used to fast, high speed content that's bombarding them with a lot of emotion, a lot of movement. So what is happening with our teen is that they are getting used to wanting a lot of sensation, a lot of emotion, a lot of things, and they're exposed to a lot of fear content. So the strategy is to educate them on the impact it has for them. So I'll give you a strategy that I use with my daughter, which is I let her watch social media content, and I initially do not put limits because I know a lot of people are let's put limits. And then I point to her, her mood. I point to her, her thinking. I point to her, how she's bored without it. I point to her, you hear the teen saying, mom, I'm so bored. Can I be on screens? And I see, you see how 
you're so bored without it. You see how addicted. So I teach her by showing her what is happening in her body and her mind so that she makes the links. Now, after that, you do have to put some limits because their brains are not developed. And so they cannot themselves regulate this, but at least they understand the concept. So it's really important to bring awareness to our children about the impact of the screen, of the content on the screen, on their mental health, so that they make the connection and they be motivated to follow your guidance. These are great pointers. And as a mom, I echo your sentiment. I love that you're using the psychological approach here versus the disciplinary approach. I think this is very effective, especially with today's youth. Now, as the founder of Madison Park Psychological Services, you and your team specialize in providing holistic care to a very diverse clientele, and you integrate ancient Eastern wisdom with modern Western therapeutic techniques, and you've successfully guided countless adults and couples and children toward wellness in a remarkably short time. So from your experience, can you share a particular memorable case where you helped the teen overcome a significant mental health hurdle, and what was their turning point? Yeah, I have countless of example, but let's choose one. Um, let's choose a teen who's having some uh, anger problem because at the teenager year, this is one of the most common problem. They have a lot of emotion. They don't know how to regulate the emotion. And so they're coming because they are angry and they're frustrated. And parents do not know how to handle this because usually it's held by discipline. So the way we did in my practice is by applying my inner message approach, which is every emotion you have is here for a purpose, for a reason. So anger happens always when you have unmet desires. We uh, like you can see that in your life, you might be angry at your husband for not doing the dishes or you have a desire and they're not being met. Well, our teens have tons of desires that are not being met. And there are tons of limitation to their life. There's school, there's no screen, there's, we put a lot of limitation. And depending on the teen, they will have more and more frustration with that. So the first piece that I implement is understanding what is the frustration and understanding afterwards, how is that frustration related to who they are? There's certain teens that love freedom specifically freedom. So this is a team that you have to implement times of freedom, times of limitation. So you have to build and give into the essence of the person. Another teen who came with frustration, their frustration is they, their essence is a playful essence. So they're frustrated because life is boring, it's homework, it's duty, it's responsibility. And they have a parent who's into duty responsibility. So it was about educating the parents about who the essence of that teen was and why the frustration was there. What was that unmet desire? And building the bridge, helping the parents. How can the parents create more playfulness for that child? And how can a playful child adjust in a world of responsibility? and making that bridge. And as you can see, this can be done within 10 minutes. I can know what's happening. And within a session, we can really help someone. It's all about decoding somebody's emotions, somebody's thought, and educating the parents and the child with strategies. Well, I mean, listen, you, you have it down to a science. And I'm so glad teens have psychologists like you to turn because focusing on, on mental health in teens is extra important since 50% of all lifetime mental illness does begin by the age of 14. So finding that support system and proper treatment early on is critical. It's critical. However, not every teen knows how to reach out for help. So, Dan, I'm interested to hear your next question. Yeah, for, for teens that might be watching or listening to this interview who might be struggling in silence, what message would you like to convey to them? So do not take your thoughts at face value, first. Second, understand that every thought that you're having is a coded message. It's like a dream. So it has part of reality, part of the way you operate, and it's here to guide you. 
And I'm going to give them an example because I want every teen out there to really understand how to manage their thoughts and emotion because that's the most important part. If you have a thought, you're not good enough, which is a very common one. That thought is calling your attention as a teen to something that you need to work on internally, which is your self-esteem. It doesn't mean that you are not good enough, but it does mean that your self-esteem needs a boost. What else do we know? When you tell yourself you're not good enough, we know that you're the type of teen that is kicking yourself in the butt as a way of motivating yourself because we tell ourselves bad things to move forward. And therefore, what we know is that you want to change your way of motivating yourself. So every negative thought you have shows us the journey in front of you. But that thought just means that there's a land that where you have good self-esteem and a land where you are, where you don't have it. And you have a desire towards it and you're motivating yourself through that negative thoughts to get there. So really understand that that thought, I'm not good enough. It's your mind who created a problem for you to go solve it with a kick in the butt approach. So it's going to kick and you're going to be in pain. So that was a little example that I want every teen to know. Every thought is a coded message. Your job is just to understand it and reach out if you need help decoding your thoughts. Wow. You, you put it all into great perspective. Now, it, when we go back and we look in recent years, many schools are working towards prioritizing the mental health of their students, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, a National Institute of Mental Health supported study revealed that adolescents who lived through the COVID-19 pandemic may be experiencing more anxiety and depression and greater internalizing problems. So our teens are in need of support now more than ever. Now, in the context of teen mental health, how important do you believe community and school support systems are? And what improvements would you like to see in these areas? Community, peers, families, any community is so important because the reality we all know, love heals all. And connection to others is what helps others feel good. And we are, we're a human being, we need others. So it's fundamental that we come together as you know, a community around our school, around our psychologists to help our teens. What I would like to see more in school specifically is an education around managing negative thoughts and emotion. Because there's a lot of education on bullying, on how to stand up for oneself, on reach out if you need help. But there's very little education on what to do if you have a negative thought. What are negative thoughts? Why would you be having them? I want education. I want people to understand that if you perceive a criticism, you will start having negative thoughts afterwards. If you are in a fight with someone, your mind will create negative thoughts. I want teens to be instructed on what creates negative thoughts so that they can be equipped with the tools to then deal with them, which is when you have received a criticism and you have negative thoughts is because you're debating in your head if so, what they said was true. And therefore we need to build a solid identity. So I do want more education around thoughts and emotion. And the last piece is we have to help our teens have solid identity. Because when you have a solid identity, harm doesn't get in. I always use this example. If I feel pretty and you tell me I'm ugly, I'm going to think there's something wrong with your eyesight. It's just not going to enter. But if I have doubt whether I'm pretty, I'm ugly, I'm going to go Maybe they're right. Maybe my nose, maybe my mouth. And if I really feel ugly, I'm going to be, how dare you? Or, oh, I'm so ugly. They're so right. And I'm going to spiral into a negative emotion very quickly. So the best way to equip our teen is to build a strong identity, to help them build a strong identity based on who they are with no cracks. That's great advice. 
Yes. Thank Dan? you. Dan? Yeah, can you, can you also share like strategies for building resilience in teenagers facing mental health challenges? Yes. So one of the biggest advice is how can you build faith? You have to build faith. When you're facing a mental health challenge, your mind will have tendency to go towards the negative. It will look at what's wrong, what's missing, what's not there. Hmm. So one of the advice is I want every single teen to list every day where's the support what they did right what's going well then i want them to list what is their talent what is their strength and if they have a hard time finding them ask people around ask friends what who am i what do you think about me and they will tell you and i want them to use their strengths and talent and use the strategy at looking where is the support to find the help for the missing, the lacking, the negative. And that gymnastic needs to happen on a daily basis for every teen out there. It's an important gymnastics. I love everything you said. I can I can speak to you for hours, one mom to another. It's <laughs> great. It's great listening to somebody put it all together in such in such a uh, logical process because children are such complex individuals especially teenage children and their mind is going through like you said a million emotions a day and navigating this could be very challenging for many parents who don't know or are not are not equipped with coping mechanisms right so thank you for the service that you provide Dan, thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure having you on again. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for your question for this episode. It's very well needed. So thank you. You are so welcome. You are very well needed. That was our Discover Your Potential segment sponsored by Bodyline. That was the incredible Dr. Yasmin Saad. She's an award-winning top three in New York City psychologist, founder of Madison Park Psychological Services, and she's a two-time international best-selling author. Be sure to follow her on the gram at Dr. Yasmin Saad with two A's or visit her online at dryasminsad.com and her practice at madisonparkpsych.com. And of course, you can see more of Dan by heading to Discover Your Potential show.com. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A moment of Zen is sponsored by Body Align. Are you ready for a long winter's nap? Over 183 million adults have trouble sleeping at least once a week. That's why Body Align designed a wearable patch that helps you fall asleep faster, wake up feeling refreshed, and comes with a money back guarantee. Try the Sweet Dreams patch today and get a buy one, get one free pack with the promo code DYP. Visit BodyAlign.com and enter DYP at checkout because discovering your potential starts with a great night's sleep. That's BodyAlign.com.